Okay, this is the last question on our intermediate uh, interview. Uh, what is a circular reference? Um, so circular references, which have been around forever, have been the bane of almost <laughs> every programming language and programmer for the last 50 years. Mm -hmm. um, the basic idea is that A points to B, B points to C, C points to A. Um, they naturally and around and around we go. They naturally occur all the time in reality. Mm -hmm. um, they happen all the time. Um, you have a car. Your car has a driver. You've created a circular reference. Yeah, right there. Most uh, attempts up until now to deal with them have been disastrous. Mm -hmm. um, every every programming language up till now has tried counting or avoiding them or making the you the programmer manage them and it just never really has found a good workaround mm -hmm. c sharp more or less fixed the problem okay uh the garbage collector is just an unbelievable piece of engineering mm -hmm. um, it detects circular references keeps track of them all understands when to collect uh unreachable values and when to reclaim memory it all pretty much takes care of itself now we can create a circular reference and we need to be aware of them because if we write a piece of code that spirals down into one of them, mm -hmm. it can be a problematic if we're not aware of it. Um, but we can engineer uh, a, a circular reference right here. Let's make a class. Okay. Uh, right underneath there. Just go underneath line 16 here. Let's make a new class. Okay. Uh, underneath line 16. Oh, outside of this. Yep. And let's call it test. Okay. Right? Actually, let's call it node. Okay. Let's make this a little... We'll make this kind of like a linked list. So we're going to make two properties. Mm -hmm. Let's call a property called next and of type node. Of type node. Yeah. Next. And let's make another copy line 20. Call it prev. Right? So let's just have some fun here. So back on line 12, okay. let's instantiate one of these. And let's go ahead and make three of them. Okay. That may be a little overkill. We really only need two to make a circular reference, but something about three really makes it, you know, visible. Mm -hmm. Right? And let's just go ahead and set some properties here. So uh, let's come down after the instantiation. And let's say in one dot next mm -hmm. equals in two. And actually, we don't even need the prev variables. I don't know why I bothered to put that in there. We can say in two dot next equals in three, and in three dot next <laughs> equals in one. Hey, look at that! It figured it out. <laughs> the, the IntelliSense said, hey, "I think you're trying to. I think you're trying to make a circular <laughs> reference. Let me write that code for you." Gotcha. So what we've created is a circular reference right here. So if you were to uh, we could write a loop. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's okay. do this all right. Uh, uh, do while true. Mm -hmm. There we go. Um, tell you what, right before we do our our do, let's make a variable. Okay. Um, let's say node um, a equals n1. Okay. And then inside our do, we're just going to say a equals uh, a dot next. So we're going to keep setting value a equal to the next node in the sequence. Gotcha. Um, and then we'll, and for a while here, we're going to take the true out. I just didn't want you to get any squigglies while we were writing our code. Let's say while a does not equal null. So when we hit the end of the chain and A becomes null, uh, we will fail. And for right now, um, can you go to line 18? Okay. And instead of in one, can you put null there? And while we're at it, um, let's do a console.write. Trying to think what would be useful here. <laughs> Yeah, it did work. We'll just step through it. Okay. We're on for a break point. Yeah, right. Yeah, perfect. That's absolutely perfect. So 
So we're running our code, our okay. little console window here. So A is going to be equal to N1. Mm -hmm. Okay. There we go. And then when it steps over that one, it's going to go to the next node in the sequence, which will be 2. It'll go through again, which will be 3. It does, it's not going to tell you. It's just because gotcha. it just says the type, and that's not really helpful. And then it's going to be null, and it's going to step out. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go ahead and put line 18 back. Okay. And this is in one? In one to close the loop, so to speak. And let's restart that program. Okay. Yep. Now let's step through. And don't worry about taking your time. <laughs> we are in an infinite loop because we are iterating through the same three objects over and over and over again in a circular loop. And we'll never get out. We'll never get out. <laughs> now, back in the old days where you had to manually reclaim your memory space, um, you had to really be mindful of things like this so you knew to clean them up afterwards. Yeah, if I hit play... Will that mess us up? Uh, no, you're eventually... It used to be. It used to. You're going to have to stop it yourself eventually. If you had a console that right, this would be really entertaining. Look at your memory There's and There's the garbage puzzle right there. Yeah. Mm. There's no garbage disposal because we're actually not destroying anything. We're just looping through the same yeah, three yeah, items. But right, we right. are eating up a lot of CPU and, and, and... We'll go ahead and stop that. Yeah, because um, yeah, it's... We just looped like a billion times um, <laughs> through the same three values over and over and over again. So if you had to loop through three values and uh, you just needed to do some process to them, you would never stop. Um, obviously, we need to be aware of it, but it doesn't have all the negative connotations that it used to have. If we were to exit out of here or delete N2 and N3, um, clear them out, set them equal to null so that the garbage collector could pick them up, uh, it would realize that it shouldn't garbage collect them. I know it's going to sound weird here, but if we took N2 and N3 and we set them equal to null, mm -hmm. the garbage collector is smart enough to realize, even though we set N2 and N3 equal to null, which effectively wiped out the variable N2 and N3, mm -hmm. you could still go to N1.next.next .next and get to N3. Mm -hmm. And because the garbage collector realizes you can do that, it actually won't collect any of that variable, anything until all three of them are destroyed. Because if any one of them exists, it's still possible to get to the next one, mm -hmm. or to get to all of them. So that that's a circular reference. That's a circular reference. Um, what was the actual question? Um, when, I don't what was the question? <laughs> Uh, when to use a circular? No, when when to use a circular. I think it's just basically the know the uh, the the idea. What is a circular yeah. reference? Um, that's a circular reference. Like I said, anytime you have um, an object A pointing to B and B through some means points back to object A, and just you've created a circular through. reference. Thank you for watching that video from F12 Programming. Please remember to like and subscribe. That does so much for us in the ratings. You have no idea. Also, don't forget to comment below. I hope you enjoyed and good luck coding.